Should you take a deposit? Pros and cons. How much is it really costing you to not take a deposit? How many hours have you spent waiting on clients? How often have you had to throw out a perfectly good tray setup because you got a no-show? What was the impact on your peace of mind? Not to mention, what would you do to not have to worry about it anymore? Or at least not have to worry about it as much. Welcome back. Okay. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sheila Bella and I help beauty business owners make more money in their salons, studios, and online. If you like making more money, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so you'll get notified every single time a new money-making business building video comes out, which is every Friday. Today, we are talking about taking deposits, pros and cons, and I am busting the biggest misconceptions new artists have about taking deposits, right? So if you've been in the personal service industry for a decent amount of time, you'll have experience client cancellations, no-shows, uh, which puts you in one of two boats. Number one, if you don't take deposits, you are at a loss for your time and probably for your tray too. Number two, if you do take deposits, you'll need to enforce your cancellation policy. And sometimes that's not fun. And for anyone who hasn't had to toss out a tray, I want you to imagine getting ready for date night, blowout, hair, put on a full face of makeup and you contour like a boss, carefully choosing a super cute outfit and then your date cancels on you at the last minute. That's how it feels. That's how it feels to have your client cancel on you Toss out the tray you just set up. I dress up for my clients, so yeah, sometimes it's an outfit too. You know what fearful thought drives artists steer clear of taking deposits? It's this. If I charge a deposit, it will scare away clients. What? Honey, honey, you do not want the clients that are scared off by having to pay for a deposit. Do you want that, <coughs> honey? It's like we think of clients as these like flightly creatures that we have to lure in kindly and gently, slowly. Have you ever tried to feed a wild animal from your hand? You come in so slowly smiling because you're scared that if you make any sudden moves, it'll get spooked. Like, have you ever tried to feed a squirrel? I have, I haven't been successful. But you, clients are not squirrels. Okay, if you don't lean in too far and hear a twig snap between your foot and she runs away. Okay, you blew it. The point is taking a deposit is not that twig that snaps and ruins everything. Plus, the client you want is responsible, invested, committed, who values you and your time, right? Not some flightly squirrel who spooks easily. Taking a deposit is actually part of the qualifying process to attract quality clients who care? Let's dig in. Why beauty pros take deposits? Well, it qualifies serious clients. Requiring a deposit is a common practice for luxury, high ticket, lengthy procedures such as PMU and eyelash extensions. It is a common thing for permanent makeup artists to have a standard $100 deposit, not to penalize the client, but as an assurity to confirm that the client is serious and committed Additionally, a deposit repels unqualified clients who may be price shopping, forgetful, uncommitted, right? This is incentive for clients to arrive on time. When a client shows up late or worse, doesn't show up at all, that results in a loss of revenue for your business with a spot that could have otherwise been filled. <sighs> so mad! Mm. New artists are especially vulnerable to cancellations and no-shows as they tend to charge lower prices and don't have organization policies systems in place that more experienced business owners do. It boosts cash flow. A deposit can be used to purchase supplies and materials to prepare for that procedure. So this is especially important for new artists who are burdened 
with startup costs. It's freaking expensive. Cash flow. Cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. You have to spend money to make money, but it's tough to spend what you don't have, right? So why not, if you're new, charge deposit and use that for your supplies and then do the appointment. If you're new and you're like, oh, where am I gonna get this money? It makes sense. It's tough to spend what you don't have. Now let's talk about why beauty pros don't take deposits. Accidents happen. Accident, illness, injury, loss of a loved one, pregnancy, or other unforeseen circumstance may result in a late slash canceled appointment. So it's common to see this in PMU forums with screenshots of these situations asking for the advice of other PMU artists. What should I do? Technically, the business may have the right to keep the deposit. However, morally and emotionally, artists don't feel like it's the right thing to do. Hey Beauty Boss, is your social media in dire need of some TLC? Do you find yourself constantly struggling to figure out what the heck to post today? Oh God, I gotta write another caption. I gotta post another picture. I gotta, I don't even know what to post. What if we told you that tomorrow morning you could wake up and have a year's worth of social media content created for you? With just a click of a button. Sheila Bella and I have been working so hard and we can't wait to finally share this with you. It's Beauty Social 365. Okay. So when we say that your content is done for you, we really, really mean it. Sheila, tell them what they get. You get a year's worth of Canva templates with four different branding options that are completely customizable to fit your existing branding. Instructional videos on how to use the templates and the captions. 365 Instagram captions. And these captions are categorized by six different content buckets that are specifically curated to build trust. And we can't forget our bonus chapter, branding your Instagram highlight covers. As well as educational tutorials like our trust building formula that's tested and proven to turn strangers into paying clients. And last but not least, how to create a content calendar. For $547, that's literally $1.50 a day. And all of your social media posts are done for a whole year. $1.50? We know, it's crazy. We are serious, this is real life. Guys, this is literally hours and hours out of your life for this price. We know, it's insane. Save money on a social media manager. Get off that phone. We've done it for you. Whether or not you're a trainer, an artist, you do lashes or PMU, it's completely customizable to your niche, to your level and your business size. So what are you waiting for? Go to beautysocial365.com to find out more. Refund disputes. When you force your cancellation policy and the keep the deposit disgruntled clients may choose to dispute the charge with their credit card company. If this happens, the credit card company may hold your business responsible. You may cover the cost plus any chargeback fees. And if refund disputes become a common occurrence, your business may be penalized by the lenders. Loss of goodwill. While your cancellation policy may be written in black and white, enforcing your cancellation policy, yeah, it's, it's a gray area, it can be. If there's no proof slash documentation that your client has read and agreed to the cancellation policy terms, your client may dispute the cancellation. Even if you win the argument and retain the deposit, you have lost the war. Should the relationship sour, you risk a walking billboard of someone who was wronged by you and maybe a bad review to prove it. So what should you do? Paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. If you choose to take deposits, you protect your time, your revenue, make sure you have a well-documented cancellation policy and proof that your client has read and agreed to it. The cancellation policy should be available on your website as well as a required field on your booking page before the client checks out. Always, always enforce your cancellation policy. You have it in writing that she agreed to 
that she agreed to it, right? So refer back to that. Should you need to have a conversation with her in the event of a cancellation or a no-show, be like, uh, remember, <laughs> remember this? Do you remember this? DocuSign, like, you need to figure it out. It's just gonna cost you way too much money. You need to figure it out. You wanna be like, this had your name. It says, I have agreed and signed the terms. I have read and agree, you know. If you do not enforce a cancellation policy, she is most likely gonna be a repeat offender. Like, like kids, when you enforce your policy, policy, you're saying, I'm a professional, this is my business, my time is valuable, thank you for respecting me. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Call your client, pick up the phone and call her within 24 hours of her booking to thank her and ask if she has any questions and remind her of any prep instructions the night before or the morning of her procedure. Call her again to remind her appointment and anything that she needs to know. You can, you can make this automated. You can make it automated text. Yeah, no one says that you need to be like a... It is the 90s. What year is it? They have that now. They have auto text now. I have a hatch alarm clock that automatically reminds me. To, Alexa automatically reminds me to do things. You can do that. It's the 90s. The more involved you are in the process, the less likely your client will get cold feet and cancel at the last minute. Following up is customer service. It is nurturing the relationship and showing your client that the lines of communication are open. She's about to get a face tattoo from you. Yeah, or like if you do lashes, you're about to stick like some sharp tweezers next to her eyeball. Yeah, you gotta, you have to nurture that relationship. Question, I wanna take deposits. How much should I charge? Okay, this is a common question. You probably see a flat rate of like $50, $100 among artists. However, more experienced artists kind of do it differently. So typically, I see more experienced artists charging a 50% non-refundable booking deposit upon making the appointment. 50%. This serves a dual purpose. It shows that the buyer is invested, they have skin in the game, and something to lose. The deposit also hedges against financial loss in case the client cancels or doesn't show up. What are your thoughts on deposits? Do you take deposits? Why or why not? What are your reasons? I wanna know, let me know in the comments. I wanna hear from you. Final thoughts. If you do choose to take a deposit, which I encourage, highly encourage you to do, be consistent. Enforcing your cancellation policy will feel uncomfortable for you in the beginning, and you may receive some pushback from certain clients. Don't let this discourage you from standing up for yourself and your business. It's a game of short-term pain for long-term gain. If you enforce your boundaries and your policies in the beginning, you're gonna have fewer and fewer experiences where clients take advantage of you. I don't, I don't want you to quit this business just because clients take advantage of you. Stop wasting your time saving hundreds of hours, thousands of dollars of revenue loss going forward. Take deposits. Thanks for hanging out with me in this episode and I will see you in the next one. But before you go, I want you to check out these other videos. This one is the three key predictors of Instagram success. And this one is how to ensure the financial health of your beauty business. I'll see you there.